Overall, do you think that maybe Klopp's inside Pep's head? We talk about mind games. We were discussing it during the pre-show, weren't we? There have been some great mind games over the years in the Premier League. Is this happening here to Pep, do you feel? I, no, I look, I honestly believe that Liverpool have a couple of ways of playing now. And, and I, I think they've, they've figured a system out that when they're great, they can break forward and, and, and create chances. But when they need to dig in and, and dig deep, they can do that. And I think he can change it. Whereas Pep, because he, they love playing this style of football, it's kind of only one way. It's his way. And if you don't have a backup plan, sometimes you can get outdone by the great teams. I think it helps, though, because Liverpool have got a, a settled team. Bar maybe yes. Matip or Gomez, you know, really, I think you know what their starting eleven is going to be. At the moment, City have got injuries, uh, lack of form from some of their players. So, at the moment, no one knows what their strongest eleven is. I think that's the problem. The only thing I'd say about it, uh, City, and you're right, they've had a lot of injuries, particularly in central defence. They've had injuries in the past. It's more about the, the drop in form of players because the size of their squad, the quality of their squad, over the last couple of years, they've always been able to interchange and players have lifted and slotted in and done a really, really good job. Something's not quite 100% right with the way they are at the moment. I just think losing Vincent Company was massive um, on and off the field. Injuries he struggled with towards the latter part of his career. But in a game like this, to call on a captain, a leader like that, it, it might have seen him through. But I know we don't want to go too much about defensive side, but there was not real organisation at the back. And every time Liverpool got the ball on a counter-attack. It looked like they could score. Very is, dangerous. Is that the most disappointing thing for you? Like we talked about briefly before the game, that Fernandinho is playing a centre-half. This game, how big it is against the opposition with Mane, Salah, Firmino, you've got to put Alphamini back in there. For, uh, Fernandinho is a holding midfielder. Is that right? Look, I don't want to go against Pep's tactics. He's a manager and he's a top manager for a reason. But I just think in big games, the small differences you know, can, can make the difference in 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 the long run, especially in this game, you know, just position-wise, as a as a centre back organisation, Fernandinho has been been great, but he's not a, a natural centre back, and sometimes I think that's what City missed today. I think you, you you look back on on what you said earlier that City coming here, would they take a point looking at what they had, especially at the start of the game, you know, with the players missing and all that, but that's just not in Pep's DNA. Culture. It's, it's not DNA. His, yeah. He's actually not in his DNA, so he's gone and go well. We're going to win. We're going to play the way we're going to play and we're going to win. But it just didn't work today. But do you think that up, uh, coming to, to Anfield, having, you know, City's record here is not, is not great? So um, I think sometimes you've got to give Liverpool a little bit more. They're full of confidence. Uh, you know, the winning games with a little bit. We look at the Sheffield United game where, you know, the, the, the one one nil, and then the, the one uh, the game before, you know, two one in the last like last ten minutes of the game. I think you, I think you call that a sign of a good team. Exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. You've got to you've got to make your own look. The onslaught. Well. It's a bit like the United side of, of the two thousands and so forth. Arsenal before that, they're relentless. Yeah. Keep going, and, and that's what Liverpool do really, really well. Yeah. Harry, just a question for you: If you were Manchester City today, would you? If you were Pep Guardiola, would you have put Ottomani as centre half and put Fernandinho back as a centre centre? A holding midfielder. Again, it's it, it, it's great being here. Yeah, I would because you're, you're playing with someone with a defensive mind. But again, you're talking about a centre half that Pep still wants his centre halves to play. So again, I can see why he will play. I mean, don't forget, I am a huge Sorry, fan. Sorry, um, I have to interrupt. We do have someone standing here in the goal <laughs> wanting to join the conversation. How are you doing? Andy, how are you, mate? Andy, Andy Robertson. Right. Congratulations on the victory there. Huge result heading into the national break. With all the injuries City had, etc., did you really smell blood in the water? before the match even started, feeling extra confident? Not really, to be honest. You know, you still see the, the team that Man City have put out and it's, you know, full of stars, full of players that have spent a lot of money on. So, you know, I don't think that was anything to to do with it. Um, we knew that if we played our best game that we believe we can beat anyone. And, you know, luckily we managed to get our noses in front. I think that was a key factor today. I think the first goal was always going to be crucial. Um, and luckily we managed to get it um, after a VAR check that we had to wait on. But once the goal that was given, then we believed that we could then kick on. And, um, you know, luckily we've done that and I think we, we deserve the victory in the end. Any questions? Andy, how hard is it to contain yourself? It's game 12. You know, you've got this nine point gap What's said in the dressing room? What does the manager say? How do the players react after such a performance today? I think, to be honest, last season it will help us so much in terms of, you know, we, we never got ahead of ourselves then and we won't get ahead of ourselves now. We, like, it's obviously fantastic being top of the league and, you know, a good a good points total just now. But, 
we know that there's going to be bumps in the road and it's all about how you deal with them and um, there's still like you said there's a third gone but unfortunately for us there's two thirds to go and <laughs> we need to we just need to keep plucking away and we need to keep getting the results that, that we need and um, you know sometimes we've not been at our best and picked up points and you know sometimes we are at our best and obviously I don't think teams can deal with them but we know there's going to be more tough challenges ahead and everyone will want to beat us and, and that's up to us to stand up to that Look for me Andy I've seen you all season and for me, this was your best performance as a team. And, I, and for me, anyone could have played against you today and you would have beaten them. And first and foremost, congratulations. How is it, how is it playing in a team like this now? Like I said, you just see the chemistry. Like anyone can be in any kind of position and you, you know exactly what, what's doing. How is that, how's that working? Yeah, look, it's, look, it's an amazing team to play for. And I think, you know, the last three years we've, we've made some, you know, really good signings and nobody's left, which is so important for us because, you know, we've stuck together now for, I think, that's about two and a half years. Um, all of us been together and, you know, that shows. We know exactly how each of us play. We know exactly where each of us will be. And, and that's why, you know, we get it right so many times. I think, you know, I think today and probably Tottenham a couple of weeks ago was up there with our best performances. And, and that's what we need to keep on doing. We need to keep putting eight performances in because, I agree, like, if we play like that, I don't think many teams can deal with us. And, you know, it's all about taking the chances as well. And luckily we have a very good front three that can do that. And and, and just lastly from me, are you and Trent having a little bet so you can ping many balls? <laughs> I mean, I love it. I'm not going to lie because you get out so well with each other. And I think it's fantastic. Yeah, I think, you know, Trent, I think, wins that hands down. I think he plays, you know, 10 or 12 a game. And you certainly wouldn't Oh, you just me, keep putting them balls yeah, into yeah, my... Exactly. That's fine, you mate. You certainly wouldn't see me trying one with my right foot. I don't have that in me, but, um, you know, he's... I think his range of passing has been talked about worldwide and it's rightly so because he, he, you know, he's a fantastic player at 21 years old and he'll only get better um, and yeah we have a competition with this and stuff like that always because we believe that gets our best out of both of us and um, you know we're good mates off the pitch and you know that's key to you know a good change in him. Any final questions Mike? I know you're disappointed yeah. here. Yeah, <laughs> I'm disappointed but um, I have to say you and Trent and Alexander are the best two fullbacks uh, in the league how, how has Klopp enabled you to just go out and just give you that freedom just to go and play? Because obviously I've had, I've had you and Trent in my fantasy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, at least I had to take you out yeah. today. Yeah, of course. Uh, because um, yeah, cause I'm City. But yeah, it's just amazing to see how, how well you're both doing in such a short space of time. Is, is, is that down to, obviously it's down to you lot's hard work, it's down to Klopp giving you the freedom to go and just enjoy your football? Yeah, of course, like, yeah, the manager's massive to it. He, he wants, you know, me and Trent to be involved in, in everything. And, you know, to be fair, maybe the people that don't get the credit deserves the midfield. I think, you know, if you look at Hendo and Genie today, they, they covered an unbelievable shift that lets me and Trent probably advance that wee bit more. And uh, obviously Fabinho just breaks everything up and, um, you know, it's amazing. So they three are so crucial to us because if they weren't the way they are, then we probably couldn't get us forward as much. But like we try and just play with freedom and play with enjoyment. And I think you can see that on the pitch that we play with a smile on our face and, you know, long may that continue. Oh, Sorry. Perfect. Thank you so much thank for your time. You Hopefully well, see you right. again soon. Yeah, Absolutely brilliant. OK, gents, I do want to continue the discussion here. But first, this is always interesting. Let's uh, get a few words from Pep Guardiola.